back to another episode of Krishna Draws. Today we're going to go ahead and learn how to make a tree stump using Photoshop's lasso tools. Let's get started. Let's start off by making a new layer called base. Now we want to use the freeform lasso tool and we're going to draw the bottom of our trunk. We know the trunks taper. I'm going to create a shape like this. I've got my color panel open. I'll pick kind of a brownish value. And I'll hit Alt Backspace or Option Delete. And let me go ahead and make the top part. I'll call this top. And I'll make it circular. I'll fill that in with kind of a beige value. So I've got the top and the base. So now I want to add some texture to the base. With the freeform lasso tool, I'll make a pattern that looks almost diamond shape. I'm holding down the shift key using the polygon or the regular lasso tool. And I'm making a series of diamond shapes. The diamonds can be big or small. I observed this when I was looking at reference. And we'll do a few more. Control J, Control U. And that's going to be our bark. And let's also mimic that bark on the side of the tree trunk. So if I go back to my base, with the lasso tool, I can just create a few jaggedy edges, like so, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now that I've got the bark in place, what I want to do is I wanted to I want to define the uh, st uh, the uh, roots. So I'm going to go ahead and make some contours. I'm basically following it as if it was a tapered cylinder. I'll hit Control J, Control U. And let's go back and add some knots and some, you know, just imperfections. So again, going from the base, Command J, Command U, make it a little bit dark. Let's go to the top now and let's add the circular ring, or set of rings rather. Command J, Command U, let's make that a little bit darker. So now we have the top and the base established with their textures. So now I want to come back and I want to add some lighting information. So if I hold down the Command or the Control key and I select the preview, the thumbnail uh, for base, it will select the base. And I'm going to move to the layer directly underneath my top. I'll set it to screen and I'll call this one Base Highlight. So I'm using my screen layer for highlights. I'll come back in with kind of a saturated orange value. I'll use the soft brown pressure opacity brush and I'm going to establish a light source coming from our left. I'll make this brush a little bit bigger for the bigger areas and I'll make it smaller as I paint some of those tapered areas. Already you can see that there is a, an appearance of form on the trunks themselves. With the base still selected, I'm going to make a new layer. I'll call this Base Shadows and I'll set that layer to multiply, pick a dark brown value, and paint the areas that are not receiving light. And how do I know where the light's not being received? I have to look at reference. You want to be consistent. It needs to look believable. Okay, I'll deselect that. And now let's address the top. Top part I don't want to really add any highlights to it. 
it's fairly flat it's gonna you know deflect light evenly but I might go back in and I might just create a layer called top shadows set that to multiply and just if I zoom in just paint a slightly darker area over here not needed but you know if you wanted to add that in you can great so now that we have our trunk in place what we can do is we can take all of these layers that we've just created and group them I'm gonna call this stump complete what I want to do is I want to make a copy of that group so once I've made the layer folder uh, I will make a duplicate by hitting command J and this is a pretty neat trick you can open up that group that you've just copied over merge all the layers by using command E and then with the transform tool and warp I can give a little bit of shape variation to this trunk so this might be helpful if you're trying to create say an area that has been logged right or where all the trees have been chopped down instead of having to redraw stump after stump you can save yourself a little bit of time and you can see that this guy looks a little bit different than the one next to him if you wanted to you can also change things like the hue right to kind of give it a different tone so the, the possibilities are really endless with this approach my whole idea is to make the idea of digital painting less intimidating to people that are trying to learn how to get their bearings. If you found this video to be helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could go ahead and let me know in the comments below and feel free to share it with other folks that might be struggling with digital painting. I'm curious to know what you think about my techniques and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one and I hope you learned something.